Hello, I'm Professor McCoy, and today I want to talk about Pascal's Wager. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of at least two videos on Pascal. Uh, this one is going to focus specifically on uh, the argument which has come to be known as the wager. Um, the other video is going to be focused more on the, uh, the context and the setting and why, uh, why this argument is important and what impact it makes and uh, where it goes from there. Um, a short version of the delineation of this, um, this video is going to be talking specifically about about uh, the wager, that is, what is usually excerpted in a philosophy of religion text, uh, including the text that I use for class. Uh, the next video is going to talk about what's called the discourse on the machine more broadly. That is the section of uh, Pascal's text that uh, the wager is excerpted from. Um, and we'll look at the importance of, uh, of the greater context in the second video. Uh, for this one, I just want to look, uh, as I said, about the wager itself. Uh, what is it? How does the argument go? What is the argument trying to prove? Um, and why is he making this kind of argument? Uh, so to begin with, I'll begin with the last point. Why is he making this argument in particular? Uh, so Pascal um, was writing primarily in a, uh, in a context where there was very widespread skepticism, uh, not just about belief in God, but skepticism about knowledge in general. So he was writing in the context of the Peronian skeptics, the academic skeptics, uh, and the Cartesian skeptics, so those surrounding René Descartes. Um, and because of this, he was trying to uh, provide a reason for believing for those who uh, who had analyzed the issue and come to no conclusion. Uh, basically, he's writing to people who, uh, who think that the issue of does God exist and should I believe in God is inconclusive. And what he's doing is he's providing uh, a practical case or a pragmatic case uh, for choosing to believe in God. Uh, the reasoning goes something like, if well, if we can't uh, if we can't come to a rational or logical conclusion, uh, we have to come to some conclusion in some way. We have to decide one way or the other. Um, and he says that the most practical way of doing that is to decide pragmatically, uh, to decide on the basis of, well, uh, the same way we decide what to do in any other everyday circumstance. Uh, what'll make the what'll make the best outcome? What is the best decision to make? Right. And so, first of all, he uh, he points out this uh, that uh, not choosing, right, choosing to withhold belief, right, choosing not to uh, decide whether to believe in God or not, uh, is effectively making a choice. Right. Um, I use the example uh, of well, if you believe in God uh, under normal circumstances. Um, Put, setting aside the uh, the current uh, the current uh, coronavirus um, circumstances of, of uh, quarantine and social isolation, under ordinary circumstances, um, whether you believe in God or not, what choice you make about this belief uh, is going to impact things like what do you do on a Sunday morning. Right. Uh, if you believe in God, you'll act in a certain way. If you don't believe in God, you'll act in a different way. Right. If you believe in God, you will attend religious worship, you'll go to church, you'll go to Mass, however, however we want to uh, parse that out. Uh, if you don't believe in God, you might sleep in or go to brunch or do nothing in particular. Right. So what Pascal wants to point out is that not choosing, withholding belief, saying I, uh, I'm not going to assent to either believing or not believing, that is effectively making a choice because you're going to act in one way or the other necessarily. Your actions are going to be acting in a, are, are going to, um, they're going to be on the basis of some belief, even if you don't uh, consciously and um, uh, you know, publicly assert that belief. In other words, you're either going to act as if you believe or you're going to act as if you do not believe. And there's no middle ground. Uh, and this is why he says that the wager is forced. You have to make this choice. And so he has to come up with a way of making the choice if logic, argument, reason, and evidence won't cut it. Okay, so how does he do it? Well, uh, he decides to go with uh, a popular uh, pastime of his era, which was uh, wagering, uh, bet making, placing, uh, playing the odds, games of chance, that kind of thing. 
So what he does uh, is he lays out a probability calculus, a risk-reward um, uh, kind of calculation to try and make the decision of whether to believe in God or not. Uh, so to illustrate this, I want to go through a couple of examples, just taking a sort of a hypothetical lottery example so we can see how this probability calculus sort of thing works. So in the first scenario, uh, we have uh, a lottery, uh, ordinary kind of lottery. You buy a ticket, and if your ticket is selected, you get the jackpot prize. Um, and let's set the odds at 1 in 10 million. Okay, so your odds of winning are 1 in 10 million. Um, it costs $5 to play, uh, and if you win, you get $10 million. Okay? All right, so how we set this up is... Uh, uh, there will, hopefully, if uh, editing works properly, there will be a chart here, and we'll lay this out. So, um, we have the decision to make, whether to play or not to play. And there are two conditions. You can either win or you can lose. If you win, uh, if you decide to play and you win, uh, then you get $10 million. A positive outcome of $10 million minus the $5 that it costs to play. If you lose and you chose to play, then you gain nothing, but you've lost $5. If you don't choose to play, either way, win or lose, you, you gain nothing, you win nothing. So how we calculate our odds and how we calculate betting odds and to decide whether a bet is a good bet to take uh, is you multiply each column by the relevant percentages. So if uh, our chance of winning is one in 10 million, then we multiply our just under 10 million by one ten millionth. And that comes up with a positive outcome for playing of about one dollar. Slightly less, but it rounds out to a dollar, to the nearest penny. However, you take the other column, the lose column. So because what if you lose? Well, that is just slightly less than one. It is one ten millionth less than one. Uh, so it is nine million. It's one. It's. It's 99.99999% if we're laying it out. Hope I got that right. Um, so it amounts to almost one. It rounds out to minus $5 if we're rounding to the nearest penny. So what, we, what that means is we take our total column and we subtract our, uh, our losses, our potential losses from our potential winnings. So we subtract $5 from our potential $1. So we come out minus four dollars. So what that means is every time you play, on average, if you were to play 10 million times, you will have lost four dollars each time you play. So what that means is it's a bad bet. You shouldn't take that wager. The odds are against you. Okay, let's change the scenario a little bit. Uh, let's keep the odds the same, the same, still one in 10 million, still costs five dollars to play. However, this time the jackpot is 10 billion. Dollars. So multiplying our odds last time by a thousand, or our outcomes by a thousand. So in this case, uh, you can still decide to play or not to play. And if you don't play, you gain nothing, lose nothing, just the same. That doesn't change. However, our outcomes change if you do choose to play. If you choose to play and you win, you win $10 billion, minus the $5 it costs to play. If you lose, you still gain nothing and you still lose $5. Uh, the odds still remain the same, so we can uh, we can multiply here. We can uh, do our multiplication to find out what our uh, what our outcomes would be. Uh, if we multiply in the second column, so the loss column, it still stays the same. Same thing, still minus five dollars, rounding out to the nearest penny. But if we win that ten billion minus five dollars, um, well, we multiply our odds one in ten million, right? Well, that's an outcome of positive, a net gain of $1,000 per play. And what that means is our net total outcome, our average net total outcome per play is 1,000, positive 1,000, minus $5, which is the cost of losing, which comes out to gaining $995 per play. It is a good bet. It is an overall positive outcome. So what this tells us is that in the in this case, if it's a one in ten million odds, the uh, and the jackpot is ten billion dollars, you should play. You should bet. It is a good bet to make. 
Okay, now, how does this apply to believing in God? Well, we have to wipe our chart clean, um, and we have to change things around a little bit. Because again, as Pascal noted, the choice here is between believing and not believing, or at least acting as if we believe and acting as if we do not believe. And assuming that all of that works and we and acting as if we believe is the same as believing uh, for the relevant uh, soteriological reasons or what is relevant to salvation, which we'll look at in the second video. If that is the case, then, well, uh, we can make this choice between believing and not believing. And we have to look at what the outcomes are in the case that God does exist or the case that God does not exist. Okay, so let's look at our... Uh, our case of believing. If we choose to believe, what are our potential outcomes? All right, if we choose to believe and we're right, God does exist, then we get some infinite reward, heaven. Right? We have a positive infinite outcome. It's also worth noting that there may be costs associated with that in the temporal everyday life, right? We might have to forego certain pleasures that we otherwise might have. We might have to choose to do things that we wouldn't otherwise choose. Right? So there might be some negative finite outcomes, right? there are some costs involved. But at the same time, there also might be some finite benefits. Right? There might be a certain kind of uh, peace and, uh, and serenity in this life, it might lead to positive social outcomes, uh, it might also lead to negative social outcomes. But the point is that whether this is positive or negative, it is a finite amount which is associated with this life in particular. And so we have a positive infinite outcome, plus or minus some finite amount. Okay, what if God does not exist? If we choose to believe and God does not exist, then we have some positive or some negative finite amount, the same positive or negative finite amount that we had in the other column, if God does exist. Right, so we still, oh, bye Angel. Angel says bye bye. All right. Um, it's still the same positive or negative finite outcome, the outcome for this temporal life, this life on earth that we have. And so that part does not change. There's still some positive or negative finite amount. Okay? What if we choose not to believe? Okay, so if we choose not to believe, and God does exist, if we choose not to believe and we're wrong, then there is some infinite negative outcome eternal separation from God, the fires of hell, uh, whichever you want to call it, uh, that is an eternal and infinite negative outcome uh, of that side of our equation. Now there also might be some positive or negative finite um, outcome as well to choosing not to believe. Right? You can choose to do all of those things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to. You can uh, create your own meaning to life if we're to believe the existentialists. Um, then again, there might be some negative social outcomes. There might be some uh, negative uh, psychological outcomes. There might be some positive social, some positive psychological outcomes. Either way, there is some positive or negative finite outcome to add to our infinite negative outcome. Okay. So what if you choose to believe in? What if you choose not to believe in God? And you're right. God does not exist. Well, there's this same um, positive or negative finite outcomes that we had in the previous column. So again, that winds up being about the same. Okay, so at this point, we have to figure out odds. Right? So we can multiply and we can figure out what our total outcomes are. However, Pascal's key point here is to show, uh, is to point out, and that, that any, uh, anyone even remotely familiar with mathematics, especially at the time, uh, would recognize what he's doing here immediately. And it's that the odds at this point do not matter, as long as the odds are not absolute certainty one way or the other, right? As long as the odds are between zero and one non-inclusive, so to speak, then we have the same outcome. We have the same mathematical conclusion. And that's because any finite number multiplied by infinity is still infinity. Similarly, any finite number added or subtracted from infinity is still infinity. So what we get is, if we multiply through, so if we, if we take our first column and we, we add or subtract any finite number from positive infinity, we have positive infinity. If we add or subtract any finite number from negative infinity, we still have negative infinity. So the positive 
the positive or negative finite outcomes disappear and they become irrelevant. So we've got positive infinity uh, under uh, positive or negative infinity under our yes column, and we've got some finite amount, positive or negative, it doesn't matter, and we'll look at why, uh, in our God does not exist column. Okay, so whatever our odds are, if we multiply a finite number, so any number between 0 and 1 non-inclusive, by positive infinity, we get positive infinity. So that's our first number in our total column. And if we, if we multiply any finite number by any other finite number, we come up with some finite number. Positive or negative, it doesn't matter, because when we add it to positive infinity, we still have positive infinity. The same mathematics works for negative infinity. If we multiply a negative infinity by any finite number, we still get negative infinity. If we multiply any finite number by any other finite number, we get a finite number. If we subtract that or add that to negative infinity, we still have negative infinity. So what this tells us is how to place our bet. Because if we look at our total column, our, our probability calculus column, how to make this decision, if we choose to believe on your average bet, you'll get an infinitely positive outcome. If you choose not to believe, you'll get an infinitely negative outcome. And so choosing to believe in God is a good bet. It is a good decision to make purely from a pragmatic or practical perspective. Okay, so it's important to note here uh, at this point that this that Pascal's wager is, uh, and his whole discourse on the machine that we'll go on to talk about in the next video, this is not intended to be an argument for God's existence. Right? This does not prove that God exists at all. It doesn't intend to. It couldn't. What this does is it shows that you ought to choose to believe in God in the absence of persuasive evidence one way or the other. Because you have to make a decision, this gives you a way of making that decision in a way that's not irrational, right? In a way that makes sense, in a way that is conducive with how we make other decisions in our lives. Because that is the key, right? That's the key of this whole thing. The whole thing is not an argument for God's existence. This is a uh, this is a pragmatic concern. This is a concern of, well, how do we make this decision if we can't do so purely through, purely on the basis of arguments and evidence? Right? If we don't know if God exists, well, you got to choose whether to believe or not, and here's a way of doing it. That's Pascal's point. He's providing us with a solution to the problem of, well, how do we, uh, how do we choose how to behave? How do we choose what to believe if we can't figure it out? So that's the wager. Right? That is the section of Pascal's Discourse on the Machine, uh, which is usually excerpted. That's the narrow part. Uh, in the next lecture, I want to move on to talking about, well, why do, what do we do from here? And why does this matter? And why is this the correct way of, of uh, choosing? Um, but for that, as I said, uh, that's going to be the next video lecture. So until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.